here to welcome all of you, and we're so glad you're here for this wonderful evening of celebration. And uh, we're going to open in prayer, and uh, then I'm going to have uh, Pastor Eddie Iono greet all the ministers that are here. We appreciate all the different ministers that support the ministry of catechism in this church. I believe a, a, a great many of you have come through the course yourself, and it has absolutely changed your life. So we appreciate your support standing behind uh, all these students as they celebrate their evening tonight. Can we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you do in each and every one of our lives. Father, we know how important it is to have your word in our lives. Lord, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God, you said to study, to show ourselves approved. And we're honoring, Lord, 20 students for nine months that's been taught the word of God. We celebrate with them this wonderful evening that everything that's said and done bring glory and honor unto you, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you welcome uh, Pastor Eddie Iono? God is good. All the time. If I am a studio, the Alma Catechism, if I feel all young to the Paia, my mother, now she will support to the name Lava Fiafi. Soon of a fair name, I fear. My dear father fights a long run. My dear father tap why. I may so talk for the tour. The mamma offering I bring to talk for the tour. I may sit a mamma to know much tour. To allow me to to find out what I am feeling out for you on the tour. If I tell no far to in the name of a fiafi, in a swap from Manu Malo. Oh yes, so can we so so my tell our my one more longer in the answer of a man before you when also so my the Pahia love for him and went to Tophia and to a in a near Fiafi. If I'm a real and to a the time to my town on my soul. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Eddie, appreciate that. 20 students, nine months of studying, hearing the Word of God, but not just hearing the Word of God taught, but also experiencing the truths of God's Word. That's what makes catechism so much different than any other class. You're taught a subject, and, and then it begins to be operative in our lives, and we see how it responds to the life of, of our believers here tonight. Uh, you're going to hear testimonies of different students. They're going to share with you what this class has done for them and the experiences they experienced through these nine months. We're going to be presenting certificates of completion to every one of them that are here tonight. And we're going to lay hands on them and confirm them in the faith. You can't confirm anybody in the faith if they haven't been taught the Word of God and had the Word of God instilled into their life. And when you lay hands and confirm them, you're believing that God will bring back the Word of God to their remembrance as they walk through life. So we're excited tonight. It's a privilege and honor to present to you the Catechism Class of 2024.
rapide. class a hand. This time I'm going to introduce the staff. These are the people that work uh, hand in hand with all the students and in teaching and small group and doing the various things that are needed to make catechism be all that it is. I'd like to introduce to you Ozzy and Joanne Herrera. Johnny and Nina Ofisa. <laughs> Sister Janice Kirk is back in the sound room, I believe, helping. Uh, <laughs> Mark McMahon. <laughs> Amy Schmidt is the one that brought all the students in. Let's give Amy a hand. <laughs> and Cheryl Stream. Uh, worship to go to and we are so blessed this evening to have Shana come and uh, lead our worship tonight, lead us into the presence of God. Would you welcome Shana Soloka.
it breaks up our fallow ground, that you might rain righteousness upon you. So we bless you and we thank you for your mighty presence and for everyone here tonight that's being touched by your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're going to have Ozzy Herrera come at this time. Hello. Praise the Lord. I love that name of Jesus. Healing in that name of Jesus. Deliverance in that name of Jesus. I love that name, Jesus. Today is, uh, right now is offering time. For to come up and we get ready to give God a different type of praise, of offering of, of love of what he's done for you through the week and everything that he does for you. So if you can stand up and come through with all those that are new, those that belong in this body, you know what to do. Get up and come through the middle. Thank you.
was so good. Can we give him another hand? Good evening. It's good to see you all here. Um, I have a little speech. It's a pleasure to work with our catechism class, and it's especially been a good year this year. These students have worked hard at completing all of their work. Each week they are given a homework on the lesson in which is doing, due the following week. They memorize the books of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, uh, the Great Commission, and the Apostles' Creed during the year. Throughout the year, throughout the class, they will have taken eight quizzes. And let me let you know, some of them struggled. It's not all work, though. There are skits they have performed and potlucks and fellowships that we've all enjoyed. They also feast on the Word of God each week. The students experience object lessons that explain certain truths, such as the orange for water baptism and popcorn night for the baptism of fire. The Cataclysm class of 2024 has studied and come to the realization of what they believe. I want them now to recite the Apostles' Creed, which is a statement of what they believe. Class, will you please stand? Will you, before this audience and the host of family and friends, tell us what you believe? State the Apostles' Creed by saying, I believe one and two, which was also a memory word. Foundation stones. Hebrews one and two. Now they will answer a few questions. Question one, what is the work of the Godhead? The work of creation is the Father. The work of redemption is the Son. The work of sanctification is the Holy Spirit. Two, what are the uses, what are the areas of temptation that Satan uses? Three, what was the message that Jesus taught during his ministry? He taught the gospel of the kingdom of the churches, deliverance for the body, divine healing, deliverance for the soul, salvation, deliverance for the spirit, deliverance. Very good. Very well done. Thank you. That's powerful. How many of you know those things? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so good to get the Word of God in the hearts of these students tonight. Well, this is a, a, a time I really enjoy, and that's uh, when we have certain ones come and share their testimonies of things that they've experienced in the class. Now, every one of these students could share. There's not one that couldn't share on any of the topics that we bring up tonight. And uh, their testimony is uh, pretty much the same. But the first one that's going to share for us uh, this evening is Shaylee Moore. Shaylee Moore. This is 
is a big platform, believe me. <laughs> Shady, there's a microphone there for you to pick up. You want to test it and see if it works? Testing. Good, good. Now, Shady, could you tell us how you heard about this class? I heard about this class through Nathan Butterfield, who's my brother from another mother. And um, I've been really sick for the last two years, and it's been like kind of this doom feeling. And um, kind of searching and longing for something, something. And Nathan and his beautiful wife, Shannon, have blessed me with taking this class. They sponsored me, and it has totally changed my life. And um, the decision of doing this like became like discipline coming every Tuesday. And I was kind of like, oh, I kind of want to hang out with my friends, but I got to go to class on Tuesday. And then every time I went, I started just feeling better. And then the, dis the discipline just became this desire to be here with all of you. You know? And um, I was looking for, because I know God can perform miracles. So I was like searching for this miracle. But then what it really is, what I got was he took this burden off of me of like, what happens if I'm gonna die? What happens if, the, you know, like, this is really hard to do this in front of a lot of people. This is crazy, so I commend everybody that does this. Um, so I want to read a verse. It's John 16, 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you have peace in this world. You will have trial and tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And for me, this means everything. Because number one, I was looking for peace, and I find it in him. And number two, I always have to look back on the cross. Like Pastor K says, when we pick up that cross, we've got to remember his suffering, because he's conquered the world for all of us. And, um, and the trials and tri tribulations are promised, but regardless, we have him, you know? It's just, his, it's something beautiful. And I never was a person that would lift up my hands or even, I would be intimidated to be like, yeah, I believe in Jesus, you know. But now I can shout it to the world because it feels so good inside. And I just want to give my gratitude to God and I want to tell every person in this class and every person on this stage that showed up during these nine months, it's been a true blessing. And to just like have, you know, like he's the head, like I said, when we were talking on Tuesday, and you guys are the hand, the feet, the fingers, the toes, and everything, and work together. It's just been amazing. And I appreciate every single one of you guys. And I uh, wanna close with one last scripture. And it is um, Hebrews 12 through 11, 11. No, Hebrews 12, 11. That's how you say it. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And thank you, Pastor Kay, for training us and just loving us. And... Um, Thank you, everybody, for being here. I can't wait. And God Let's bless give you. Give her a hand. Thank you, Shirley, for sharing that. The class has done wonderful things in your life. It's given you a hope. It's uh, uh, brought you through some difficult times in your life, and God's given you that peace that you've talked about. The Bible says it's a peace that passeth all understanding. The next one to share is uh, Vance Potty. Now Vance, you're gonna share uh, what your personal experience was in water baptism, but before you share that, uh, how did you hear about the class? I heard about the class through church and uh, through uh, 
all the different pastors that are here. Um, they invited me, and I thought I'd come check it out. I've never been to a catechism class. I said, why not? So, Did you like the class? I loved it. Did you? It was great. It was, was awesome. It, was it more than you thought it would be? Yes, it was. Now, sure you're, it was. A, you're a pastor's son, is that right? Yes, I am. Now, are you a good one or a bad one? <laughs> Depends on when you met me. <laughs> I was bad and now I'm good, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm a good one. Vincent, share, share with us the experience of water baptism, would you please? So, um, the water baptism, the only thing I could think of was, uh, you know, I was raised in the church. He said I was a pastor's kid, but... I didn't really know deep enough about water baptism. I kind of went through the emotions when I was younger, followed the youth, and kind of, hey, uh, we're going to get water baptized, and kind of did our thing. And I got baptized again when I was an adult. But coming to class and actually putting everything together, learning it, hearing it, then actually doing it, it's a whole different experience. And the only thing I could say from it is, I am no longer bound. And that's the only thing that I can kind of sum up. But to me, it was one of the best experiences that I've ever encountered um, personally in my life. And God really did move. In a couple of the verses, I went back and looked at our lessons, but one of my favorites was Rome 6, 3 through 4. Know ye not that so many of us, as we were baptized into Jesus, Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And you know, I still have that, we learned in Tuesday, the old man kind of hanging around. And uh, you know, and for me it was, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't, you know, and not you know, let your dad and help them do it. They're, they're the ones that are bound. But I'm standing here today to say that I am no longer bound. And that's what really touched me through water baptism is cutting away the old inherited nature that causes iniquity to rule in our lives. And in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And I'm here understanding today that I'm new. And if you're looking for something, maybe looking to, for something new, for something further, maybe you're looking to God, or maybe you're looking to, hey, maybe catechism class, maybe that's for little kids. But you know what? It comes in all shapes and sizes, different ages. You know, God is for everyone, from the oldest to the youngest. And he can work in your life if you just give him a chance. For me, water baptism, the experience of being in there and going through that, and just experience the presence of God in my life has seriously touched me. And like I said, I am no longer bound by anything. I'm here to move forward. I'm glad that I took this class, Pastor Kay, I love you. And all my, Ozzy and Joanne, thank you guys. And all the, all the teachers up here, you guys helped me out a lot. And um, to God be the glory, and thank you. Amen. Thank you, man. That was great. That was powerful. It came up in newness of life. You buried that old man. Isn't that beautiful? Thank God for that wonderful encounter with God that you had. The next uh, topic is foot washing. And uh, we're going to have Philip Reyes come. Philip, you're going to talk on uh, foot washing and what it did for you in your life. But before you do that, could you tell us how you heard about this class? The recycler. No. <laughs> I heard about this class actually. Um, okay. Is this on? Okay. Don't um, so I heard about this class through um, through the pastor, but I met the pastor through um, 
in Rossmore um, at a, um, a craft show that my wife has um, a craft business, woodcraft business. So they were there. Don't hold the bottom, the bottom of the mic. Do not hold the bottom of the mic. Okay. <laughs> Don't hold the bottom of the mic. Okay, so um, so we were we were uh, showing at a craft show, and a pastor came by uh, with Kathy, and you know they looked at a few things, they bought a couple of things. Uh, I think a couple of weeks later, I think you came by again, and we started talking, and she's like, well, you know. So what is it you do? Because I had a jacket on that had my company name. She goes, well, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a sound engineer and I work in the entertainment industry. She's like, oh man, we could really use you over at the, our church because we just bought a new board and we want to get it installed, but we don't know who to talk to. I said, okay, well, I mean, what kind of board? I don't know, I don't know nothing. I'll you know, come to the church and I'll introduce you to our sound guys and they can tell you all about it. I'm like, okay, I'll come, I'll, I'll come by this Sunday. So Sunday comes around and I, I, you know, I came and I sat and uh, um, listened to the word and I felt the Holy Spirit. I felt that this church is led, you know, by the Lord. So I was really impressed with the message. And then, of course, after, you know, uh, Pastor came down and she was in the foyer area and I came up and I said, hi. And I, she had this look like I don't think she remembered me. And I certainly didn't think she thought I would show up. So I gave her a hug and I said, hi, remember me? I said I would come. She's like, oh, you're a man of your word. <laughs> I said, well, that's, that's my parents. They, they instilled that me, in me. And I said, yeah, I'm here. I said, how can I help you? you know? So she introduced me to the guys and I talked to you know, Carl and Jesse and we installed the, uh, the new board, the new digital board. And uh, they're, they're doing a great job. And so, but I've been here ever since then, you know, so I just really enjoy the church. I feel like the Lord has brought me to this place. And I'm just, like Nathan was saying this morning, I'm just wielding my sword. Right? That's it. I try to be here every Sunday without fail, unless I'm working. You know, unfortunately, in the entertainment industry, you work on the weekends, so. But I'm here and I really enjoyed the class, the Tuesday class. I'm gonna miss everyone in the class. They've all been great to talk to and we've all learned a tremendous amount uh, in the last nine months. So that's how I got here. That's great. I think, I think Jesse told you, Jesse told you, well, if you plan on working in the sound booth. Oh yeah. What did he say? He said, oh, by the way, and this was already after I installed the board. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, Phil, by the way, if you want to work in any of the ministries here in the church, or if you want to work, you know, behind the board or anything like that, you have to, you have to take this catechism class. And I'm like, really? And that's the first thing that came to mind. How come you didn't tell me this before I installed the board? But the other part, <laughs> but the other part was, you know, somewhere, uh, uh, you know, in my life, God is, I believe God has had his hand on me. And I, it was just like on my bucket list. You know, somewhere before I leave this earth, I want to be able to go through the Bible, you know, from start to finish. And this was an opportunity to do just that. So I jumped on it right away. And I think they were surprised <laughs> that I said yes so fast. Oh, man. What did foot washing do for you? The sacrament of foot washing. Let me read what I, what I prepared, if that's okay. So it says, what is foot washing? What has foot washing done for your life? Well, what is foot washing? Foot washing is a sacrament that enables a man to fulfill the law of God. Matthew 22, 39 says, we shall love our brothers as ourselves. Now you might ask, well, what's the, what's the purpose of, of uh, foot washing? Well, water baptism removes the enmity of God against God, and foot washing removes the enmity against thy neighbor and allows to uh, love our brothers as ourselves. <clears throat> you see, sometimes we think of ourselves, we think too highly of ourselves. We long to over, 
you know, rule over people. You know, like you go to, you get a new job or whatever, and you want, you want to be the lead person right away. That's the natural part of our being human. We always want to rule over people, and we always seek after our own uh, interests. So, um, but maybe we should learn to serve up, <clears throat> hold our brothers in, in high esteem, uh, higher than ourselves. That is the posture of a servant. Today I'm a different man than I was a year ago. I want to be more like Jesus. That's why I put my life in his hands. Amen. Like I said, I want to be more like Jesus. And with his help, I, I know I can. Matthew 23, 12 says, For whosoever exalt, uh, exalts himself will be humbled, and whosoever uh, humbles himself will be exalted. The second question that uh, I was asked to cover uh, in closing is, um, <clears throat> is it necessary for the church of Jesus Christ to have the foot washing today? What do you think? Thank you, Father. Thank you. Foot washing gives you the heart of a servant. Jesus said, if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, how much more should you wash one another's? And that was a wonderful time for you when you wash somebody's feet and they washed yours. And that humility of loving our brothers and sisters, that parallel relationship being restored is powerful. Thank you for sharing that, Philip. We appreciate that. Next one to share is Max von Lutza. Now, Max, uh, I know you've heard about this class ever since you were a young boy. And um, I know you've always wanted to take the class, and God made an opportunity uh, for that to happen for you. And I want you to share with uh, the audience uh, this evening, I want you to share what this uh, year, this whole entire nine months, has meant to you as a Christian. Well, these uh, nine months have just changed my life. The class has been incredible. I just learned so much. Um, I was born and raised in this church. I used to sit in the very back row when I was 12 or 13, when I used to watch the catechism classes go by, I said, I want to do whatever they are doing. I wanted to be a part of that. So decades later, I'm back at the church. I have an opportunity to take it, and I jumped on it. I wanted to learn as much as I can about the God of creation, and I made it. I'm here. <laughs> Well, then share with us some of the experiences that you had in the class throughout the year. Sure, I have a, um, a statement I want to uh, read. <laughs> so, it was about a year ago at this time, I was on the fence about this class. Although I always wanted to take it, I didn't know if I was ready. I had a lot on my plate. I was like, that is nine months. You could have a baby in that time. That's a long time and commitment. Again, I had a lot on my plate. But after hearing last year's speaker, I said, the time is now. I had you, Pastor Kay, pray over my application. And nine months later, the baby is born, I'm graduating. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect from this class. Just went along with the program and tried to behave the best I knew how. What I learned was invaluable. The definition of invaluable is valuable beyond, beyond estimation. It's something so precious that one cannot assign a price to it. That is how I feel about this class. You learn about God, and the things you learn, you want to apply it in everyday life. Here are some of the subjects covered. The Bible, who wrote it? Angels, creation, Father Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, the prophets, the life and ministry of Jesus, his death and resurrection. I recorded some of these wonderful lectures, so see me after service and I'll sell them to you for the low price of $9.99 per session. I'm kidding, but these are some of the topics we learned. We had hands-on practical application. We had Holy Ghost Night, healing service, communion, and of course, foot washing. I heard all about the foot washing. I'm not washing another person's feet, that's gross. I heard it from the men and women, and Pastor Kay, I heard your personal testimony as well. Can I wear gloves? Can I skip out? But I wasn't scared. In my profession, I have washed and helped supervise hundreds of naked men to get clean. And no, it's not because it's Pride Month. It's because of my job and having a servant's heart for the mentally challenged or people with disabilities who cannot wash themselves. With that being said, I was getting ready for my feet to be washed by somebody. I was going to make it worth their while, so I didn't wash their feet for three days. I got the lint built up between my toes. I'm just kidding. Everybody was clean, okay? Everybody was clean. I'm going to read you uh, this uh, passage, the scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So the last part is everybody was clean, okay? But to have somebody wash your feet like Jesus did, it's very humbling. Very humbling. People are very humble to wash another person's feet. I understand that, but because of my profession, I was like, no problem. But when it was actually done to me, I was humble and touched in a special way that it, it was just, it almost brought tears to your eyes because the humbling of that, you know. Um, this class it had lectures. I did not want the night to end and it left me wanting more. I couldn't wait for the next class. It was that good. So do you need a change? I did. I got more than I bargained for. This class is easily a $500 class, but for the low, low price of 150 bucks, you can join too. If anyone takes this class and didn't like it, I will refund your tuition. If anyone wants to take the class this fall, I will help you with the cost. It is that good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Max. And uh, a lot of people, you know, you said because of your occupation, uh, you've washed a lot of uh, men's uh, bodies, and a lot of people don't understand what was your occupation. <laughs> but you were a police officer, uh, and uh, he worked at uh, L.A. Central, I believe, and uh, they would be uh, arrested, and they bathe them, and they get them in their uniforms, and so that's what he meant when he has washed a lot of men. But at foot washing, it was totally different to take on the form of a servant. I think all of you, the last night was a highlight for all of you. You all washed one another's feet, but more than that, the prophetic word came over your lives and God spoke a word for you. And uh, I just uh, want to tell this class how much I love and appreciate all of you. And uh, thank you for that wonderful love gift last night at the banquet. I appreciate it. And uh, so at this time now, we're going to present the water baptism certificates. And uh, we're going to have you stand as a class. And when you hear your name called, you'll come down and receive your certificate. <coughs> Natalia Gomez. Norma Gomez. <laughs> Esther Toavalo.
Chapepe to a volume. Miley Ray at two hours. Okay, I, I turned my microphone off because you know they don't want to hear me smacking on everybody. But I, I no, you don't have to talk. You don't have to worry. Uh, I just want to say that that you are uh, a promise given by God to your family. Your mother and father wanted to have a baby. And they tried and tried and tried and they heard that I had a ministry that if I prayed for people, that God would give them a child. And you are a gift of God to that family. Now, I said to them, I said, where are your daughters? Well, one of them's graduating. I said, oh, really? <laughs> but I want to say uh, how proud I am of you. And you're truly a gift from God. Your parents love you, even though sometimes you don't think so, but they do. And so uh, here's your baptismal certificate. David Rosales Jr. Annalise Toavalu. Leativa Kareti Faat Tahuni. Janet Salas. Jennifer Rojo. Shailene Moore. Paul Caretti. Max von Lutzow. Sean Mines. Vincent Pati. Edward Kaufman. <laughs> Philip Reyes. Vivian Fahapito. Yeah. Now we're going to present perfect attendance. That means nine months. You made every lecture, you were on time, and did worship and everything, so uh, let's see who made perfect attendance out of these 20 students, all right? Call your name, come down, and get your certificate. David Rosales, Jr. Von Lutzow. Sean Miles.
Brother Sean, you had someone sponsor you in this class. And uh, what a tribute for you to show how much you're grateful for the sponsorship. You never miss a class. We just are so proud of you. Edward Kaufman. presentation is for the outstanding student. To be an outstanding student, you have to have perfect attendance. 
you have to have high test scores. And so it's a real honor to present to you Max Von You know, students, it's an honor to be here to be able to sing something so special for you. I want you to know, when I was very young, I had taken catechism for the first time. And I don't know if it's still there, but they had a logo with the cross, and on the top it said, enter to learn, go forth to serve. And that is what it's all about. We go forth and become servants of the Lord, and I hope this song will bless you.
were born to serve the Lord, I'll tell you what. A lot of us wonder why we were born. Some of us think we're, uh, we're, we were born to be an accident, uh, you know, that it just wasn't meant to be. But I want to say to you, we're all born for purpose and for destiny. And every one of these students behind me have completed this nine-month course. They've entered into the different uh, doctrines and sacraments that we've shared tonight. And they've learned such things in God's Word that they never even knew existed. A lot of these students never knew that there's five different types of baptism in, in the Word of God. They didn't know that there's nine ways in which you can experience divine healing. They learned that they are to work out their own salvation. Not their brother, not their sister, not their mother, themselves. I mean, we're working on ourselves, amen? So my message tonight for these graduates is that God has done a deep spiritual work in your life. And it's only the beginning. You know, sometimes, well, I got catechism down, I've got it all. Well, no, there's so much more in God. And I want to say to you that your journey with God needs to continue. Don't think for one moment just because nine months of studying the Word, I've got it all. I've been in God. I was saved when I'm, I was seven years of age. I'm going to be 80 years old this year. And I want to say to you, I've served God my whole life. And I've continued to grow in knowledge of God. And yet I feel I know nothing. And that's what it is when you follow the Lord. The Bible tells us to continue in the things that you've learned. And be assured of it. So I want to say to you as... Paul charged Timothy to continue in the things that he had learned. I challenge this class, continue. Continue means don't depart from it. A lot of people have gone through catechism class. They've uh, uh, met friends. They've experienced wonderful things. And after the nine-month course, where are they today? So we got to continue on in God class. Don't depart from what you've done. Endure a good soldier as a good soldier of Christ and live for him. Second thing I want to challenge you tonight is there's, uh, there is so much more for you. This isn't all there is. There's so much more. The Bible says in Hebrews 6, which is one of your memory verses that you uh, memorized and quoted, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now we know that nobody can be perfect, that God's perfect. He's the only one. But because God lives in me, I can change. And because God lives in me, I can walk a way that's different than I walked before. And that's what a lot of these students share in their encounter with God and the different uh, experiences in this class that their lives have been changed. And there's so much more for them than what they've experienced in this class. I want to say that God has a plan and a purpose for our life. We're all born for destiny. Now, a lot of us don't really know why was I born. What is the purpose that I was born? But I want to tell you, when you get in the Word of God, you're going to find out why you were born and what God wants you to do with your life. And there's nothing greater in your life than to serve God and to do what God wants you to do. The Bible tells us, just like it was quoted tonight by one of the students, that God has a plan for God wants to prosper us. I said, God wants to prosper us. How many of you want to be prosperous? Well, I want to tell you something. The one that's going to prosper you is God. The Lord says he'll prosper you as your soul is prospered. Now, your soul is your inner man, your spiritual man. And when my spiritual man goes to church and reads the word of God and worships, it begins to grow and enlarge. And as my spiritual man grows and enlarges, God says, I will promise to give you prosperity. Not only spiritually, but financially. Now, God wants to bless every one of us. And it determines on our will and purpose to love and serve him and do what he wants us to do. God's plans are not to harm you. God's plans is to give you a hope. And I want to say to you, we have the blessed hope. The blessed hope is Jesus Christ. How many of you have the blessed hope? 
My plans is to give you Jesus, the Bible says. But not only that, but to give you a future that will be filled with the blessings of God, naturally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. God promises that to us. My last thing I want to say tonight to the class is continue to learn, continue to grow. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace. Grace is the unmerited riches of God. It's by grace that we're saved. It's by grace that we feel God's presence. It's by grace that we know him. By grace are you saved. And we continue in the grace of God, that he's with us. Grace also means the enabling power of God. And sometimes when we walk in this life, we need God's power. Amen? God's power will enable us to get through whatever we need to get through. And Shaylee, that's what you've known in this class, is God's great grace to get you through your physical ailment. And indeed, that burden and heaviness was lifted off of her heart. And now she doesn't worry. She just lives one day at a time by the wonderful grace that God has given to her. God's power to carry her through. Knowledge. We need to get knowledge. I want to say to you, just as Sister Tina was challenging everybody, we have a full-time Bible university here. And that Bible university roots and grounds people in the Word of God. So, class of uh, 2024, may I suggest to you to take a, a Bible class from the college and continue your growth, continue your enlargement. Uh, I'd like to recommend, if I could, uh, Wednesday. Uh, we have a church Bible study on Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. If you work nights on Wednesday, you can come to the morning class. If you work morning classes, you can come to the night class. But uh, those are powerful classes. The morning class is we're going through the parables that Jesus taught. We are on our third quarter. That means there's 33 lessons on the parables. Now, maybe you didn't know that, but there's many, many parables that Jesus spoke. And every parable has a wonderful truth for us to learn. But on uh, Wednesday night, it's topical. We pick a topic and we cover that topic. And uh, it's wonderful to know that all through the Word of God, He tells us things we need to get in our hearts and to give us a deeper understanding of Him. Now, you can take any class. There's, a, there's outside in the lobby, there's a, a list of the Bible College and the classes that are offered. So I, I just really would like to challenge you to continue to grow in the Word of God. Uh, Sister Tina said the motto of the Bible College is enter in to learn. How many know we need to learn? But then it says enter in to learn and go forth to serve. So we're meant to serve, aren't we? And so uh, class, continue to grow and learn in the knowledge of God and grow in his grace. Right now at this time we are going to confirm the class. Now confirm means to establish. You can't establish something that hasn't been trained and equipped and had something put into their lives. So we're going to lay hands on them and establish them in the teachings of this nine month class. To confirm means to strengthen them more. They have a strength now, but they need more strength, amen? It means to make them firm, to be steadfast, unmoving, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're gonna lay hands on them. Acts 15, 32, it says they exhorted the brethren, the apostles did, and it says that after they exhorted them with many words and many teachings and instructions that they laid hands on them and confirmed them. Well, that's wonderful. What will confirmation do for me? Why do I need to be confirmed in the faith? Well, I want to say to you, number one, it will strengthen you, it will establish you in the Word of God, and it will be something solid in your lives that nobody can take it out of. Another thing that confirmation does is it helps you to do the will and the purposes of God. I can't do his will and his purpose 
if I don't know what it is. And I haven't been taught what it is. And so that's what we're gonna confirm them to. And then the last is it'll give them a greater love, a greater love for God. I wanna say to you, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gives us a respect for the house of God. You know, all the different pastors that are here tonight, they have brought their people to this catechism department. And they, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to copy what I've done. And they can just bring their people here and they get rooted and grounded in the word of God. And so, pastors, I thank you for that wonderful privilege to instill in your people the word of God. And I pray that they are settled in your church and they're serving in your church. I think the most important thing is that everybody speak the same thing. And when people come into your church, so many people don't speak the same thing. They don't even know what the church is all about. But these people behind me, they know what the church is all about. Shana said to the class that the last time, I think it was when they were practicing, now remember we're the body of Christ. Some of you are the hands, some are the ears, the eyes, the nose. And so that's only the knowledge speaking out of her and what she had learned in the class. So tonight, we're going to have the ministry go down, and we're going to lay hands on them and pray for God to just establish, strengthen, and settle them and cause them to flow and function in the gifts of ministry that God's called them to do. And so uh, we're going to have Shana uh, sing a song of worship for us as we go down and we lay hands and pray for them. We can sing that song, Here's My Cup, Lord. I lift it up for it. It's a powerful chorus uh, that we sang at uh, the women's conference this year. Brought in the power of God and, and uh, God's filled your cup, students, and now we're going to believe God to cause you to pour out to others, all right? Sister Cheryl, I'll turn it over to you to get them standing. Ministry, we're gonna go down.
In Jesus' name, amen. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord.
Leativa Coretti
Van Lutza. Afterwards, we'll have refreshments uh, upstairs in the fellowship hall. So, let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this night, Lord, and bless this class, Father, and everyone in here, Lord, and just bless the food upstairs, Father, as we're going to fellowship with the food and our brothers and sisters, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.